Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to episode number 101 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's the place for knife newbies like myself and knife junkies like you to learn all about knives and knife collecting. It's our midweek show where we get a chance to dive deep into uh, some of the knife stories and uh, other knife activities happening uh, today. We're going to kind of get an update on something going on with Big Daddy Blade Works. We're going to talk about Thursday Night Knives, uh, talk about a past episode, as well as look at uh, ahead to some future episodes. And in uh, Knife Life News, we're going to talk Best Tech, Civivi, Kunwu, and Benchmade. So another uh, full episode, Bob, for us this week. As you all know, we just had our 100th episode. What would you think Ooh. of that? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it was a turn of the tables on you. I should be asking you that question because you, you weren't asking the questions. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was fun to uh, be interviewed by you. I've heard you interview so many people in the past. It was good to have your guns turned on me. And uh, it was it was fun to like um you know to to think about some of those some of those questions and to right. and to you know talk about yourself I mean everyone likes to talk about themselves you know well, well some people do <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I thought you did it very well and if you didn't listen to that episode yet episode number 100 the knife junkie.com/100 and Bob uh, you announced a couple of uh, special things on episode number 100 and including a giveaway that folks still have time to uh, get in on that's right it's a cold steel Steel broken skull I'm giving away with a Snaggletooth MF on it. Uh, as you know, the Snaggletooth MF is the uh, pocket deploying device, uh, much like an Emerson Wave. It's an aftermarket uh, device. We've had the maker of that, Rob Penna, on the show. And uh, as you all know, I love the Cold Steel Broken Skull because it is so thin. It's four inches of super steel. You have no excuse not to have on you at all times because you can just put it right in your waistband and boom. You're right. good to go. So I've loved that knife. And I, as you know, I've carried a pink one for years. I am not giving away a pink one. <laughs> this will not be a pink one. Right? <laughs> this one. A, yeah, I, I may have, but they all seem to be gone because at a certain point you could buy them for half of what you could buy all the others for because no one was buying them, I guess. So they're all gone. Uh, but I'm going to get a, 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 a an OD green one. Uh, most people can agree OD green is uh, an appropriate knife color anyway. Okay. So all you got to do is email me, bob at thenifejunkie.com, and in the subject line, put episode 100, so I know. And then uh, you can, or don't have to, write me a little message, but uh, your uh, email, is wrong, as long as it says episode 100 in the subject line, will get uh, fed into a bin, and then fed from there into a random number generator. That's how we're going to select the winner, because I'd like you all to have one, but I can't afford to get you all one. Yeah, that would be pretty expensive. So, uh, yeah, and uh, that's uh, the most um, most fair way to yeah, to, yeah. to pick a winner. Random number generator. Every email will be assigned a number. And I don't think we said this on the last time. I guess there's no. It, well, I don't know. Is there a is there a uh, limit to the times folks can enter? I didn't think of that. Yeah, uh, I didn't either. Well, you know what? Let's let's just keep it to one. Why not? Yeah. Let's be sporting about it. Yeah, let's let's make it fair. Yeah, yeah. Put in a nice note, and if uh, you don't mind us uh, sharing your uh, your email, your oh, thoughts, yeah, yeah uh, put that in uh, the email to Bob too, and uh, we yeah. can uh, share your thoughts or uh, feedback or whatever on the podcast. So, yeah, let us let us know your plans for it, what you would do with it, how you would use it, how you would carry it. So shoot Bob an email at bob at com. Put episode 100 in the subject line. Uh, we'll announce the uh, winner on this coming Sunday's interview show. That'll be on Sunday, April 12th. But again, you have until midnight this Saturday night, uh, April 11th, to get that email in to be uh, entered in that drawing for the um I was getting ready to say pink because I'm so used to <laughs> saying your your knife, but the drawing for the Cold Steel Broken Skull with Snaggletooth MF attachment. 
All right, Bob. Um, also, something uh, we announced uh, Sunday on the episode 100 show, you're going to be kind of doing a special live hangout upcoming in a couple of weeks. Yep. On April 18th, Saturday at noon, we are going to have a just a gathering, a gathering of knife people, uh, people that we've talked to on the show before. Uh, we're hoping to get a special guest uh, coming in. Uh, when I have that information, I'll, I'll let everyone know what time that would be. Uh, but yeah, just a an online uh, a, a uh, live gathering with Jim behind the switcher. If any of you have seen Thursday Night Knives, you know how Jim works the switcher, bringing in screens, images of knives, and different people, different video floating in and out. Looks like CNBC. It looks like uh, Fox News right here on the on YouTube, but all about knives. We're going to be doing that, but we're going to have a bunch of guests. So it it will be a true gathering of knife. Knife lovers, knife greats, knife makers, etc. Right. And um, regular viewers have the chance to join in, too. We, if you have a webcam and a microphone, you can uh, actually join uh, Bob and the other guest uh, that we have the live hangout on April 18th and uh, come on for a couple of minutes. Maybe uh, show off one of your special knives that you've got or show off a, a knife of the guest that you have or maybe just come on to uh, to pimp a knife you're trying to sell. We, <laughs> we would certainly welcome that as well. No charge or whatever. So, uh Make your plans for a Saturday, April 18th at noon. Mark it on your calendar. Go ahead. Plan to be with us on the uh, live YouTube uh, hangout, as Bob says. Don't know how long it's going to go, but uh, we'll plan to make an afternoon of it if you'll plan to be there with us. And I got to say, Jim, like the the idea of actually seeing and meeting people who listen to this show uh, is fascinating to me. I'd love to meet some of you people. I mean, I'd love to meet you all, but I mean, it'd be so cool to uh, you know, see you on screen and have a couple minutes to chat with you, yeah. see what you're carrying and that kind of thing. All right. Well, hope you can join us uh, Saturday, April 18th at noon. Again, put it on your calendar and uh, we'll see you there. All right, Bob, a couple of other updates before we get into uh, Knife Life News. You got an update from Bone Daddy Blade Works about, uh, right. what was it, a crowdfunding project they had going on? Yeah, you remember the Axis Hand Axe? It's it's the uh, knife that also acts as an axe. You can um, take it out in the field with you and use it for all of your knife chores. Uh, but then you can also attach it to a haft or some sort of uh, piece of wood and use it as an axe. It's a, it's a really cool design. Besides the fact that it that it's an uh, interesting tool that crosses over uh, uses, it's a beautiful thing to look at. Uh, anyway, they were uh, doing a Kickstarter campaign, and they made 137% of their goal, which is amazing, and got fully supported, and then coronavirus came in. So uh, oh, they had wow. a number of people back out, you know, sadly, and, it, you know, it's no, no, no one could predict that something uh, like this would happen, but. Uh, they have decided to to expand their window of opportunity for people who pledge to to get one of these. So they're moving their their campaign over to Indiegogo and In Demand, uh, which allows them a wider funding window, so hmm. that they can take advantage of people who are interested in this. Uh, but maybe right at this moment, it's not the greatest time. But you know, gotcha. in the future. Yeah. So uh, definitely check out Bone Daddy Blade Works. Their Axis Hand Axe is just a cool implement. And useful implement, but also just beautiful to look at. We all know I like beautiful like knives. beautiful things. <laughs> yeah. So uh, check them out, Indiegogo, In Demand. This is uh, Sean Hoyman and I believe his wife work uh, Bone Daddy Blade Works. They have a, a, a small operation. Uh, I think it's them, the two of them and a couple of people. So help support them and, and this really innovative tool and, uh, you know, just a, a, a cool thing for knife people. Well, as you said, 137 percent funded. Uh, yeah. Definitely, folks like uh, agree with you that is a, a cool and useful, uh, useful uh, endeavor. Definitely. I mean, that's a it's a nice chunk of change to raise for this project. So let's let's help them get this thing uh, to market. Blade Daddy Bone Works. You can uh, just uh, use your favorite search engine and uh, find them there. Thursday Night Knives. I want to kind of mention that and promote that a little bit before we get into Knife Life News. Uh, Thursday Night Knives, Bob's uh, live video show has been going on now since uh, late uh, last year. I think it started in November or December of last year. Uh, pretty much every week. We may have missed one or two during the holiday period or whatever, but uh, mm -hmm. it's a regular Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, this past week, you had an interesting guest. Oh, yeah, yeah. First of all, Thursday Night Knives has been such a blast. There have been nights where I'm, you know, we go live at, at 10 p.m. Eastern. There have been ni uh, nights where I've had a long day and I'm like, oh, man, Thursday Night Knives. And then we turn on the light, we turn on the camera, boom, 
and then we're all just hanging out talking about knives. It's very fun. I love it. Uh, we oftentimes have uh, uh, co-hosts of the show. Uh, we have Zelric, uh, Zelric42, Terrell Todd. He comes on a lot. We have Alex Tissot of Alex's Knife Box. He comes on a lot. Awesome guy. Two great guys with great perspectives. One makes knives. One collects high-end knives. Uh, this week, this past week, we had on Slicey Dicey, Brian. I love him. I've been a sucker for his videos for about a year and a half now. And uh, with the, uh, he's up in New York and with the, with the shelter, it's not a shelter in place order, with the stay home order, he's been making a lot more videos. And um, I've been loving them all. I reached out to him. We want to come on the show. Thursday Night Knives, he said, hell yes, let's talk about knives. <laughs> he came on. He was great. And I think we're going to make him a regular co-host. Uh, if he's into it, I think he's into it. Right. And, uh, and it was great. And, and. We have people commenting, you know, people participating, and I've gotten to know some people, uh, and, and with each week, I get to know them a little bit more because more of their comments come in, and now I'm watching their videos on YouTube, people I, I, I didn't know before. It's been a great experience. I love it. But anyway, Slicey Dicey uh, just came out with a marathon of his videos. It's a three-hour and three-minute marathon of uh, some of his Knife review, well, of his knife reviews, well, the right. ones he loves the best, uh, some of the knives he loves the best, some of the reviews he loves the best, and the three hours ends with kitties. He shows off his cats. So, oh my, yeah. knives and kitties. What yeah. could be better? Man, that's that's what happens when you're when you're stuck indoors, man. Right, right. You're gonna focus on the things you love: knives, kitties, family. You know, right. Well, that's uh, going back. That's part of the reason uh, you're doing the special April 18th uh, kind of hangout get together mm -hmm. at noon. You know, it's just uh, we realize everybody's. Stuck at home. A lot of the knife shows going on this month have been canceled or postponed. Yeah. Folks don't have the opportunity to get out. So uh, let's get together virtually on April 18th and uh, talk knives, show off knives and, you know, have a party. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah. Uh, bring your favorite beverage. For me, it's going to be coffee because Lent will still be. Well, maybe not. <laughs> well, but anyway. You'll, but you'll be on the air. So yes, I not. will have coffee. Yeah, it's going to be noon. I mean, who am I? Well, if it, yeah, you can't start drinking Charles before McKenzie. noon. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you say we get in the life, knife life news? That'll be coming up next. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Speaking of Thursday Night Knives, this one came up last week. I was talking with uh, uh, Slicey Dicey about this next coming knife from Best Tech. It's called the Eye of Ra. Yeah, that's right. The Eye of Ra. And uh, one look at this knife, you know why it's called the Eye of Ra. Uh, on the handle, carved into the handle, audaciously so, if I might say, is an eye shape. It's uh, two triangles on either side of a circle, and it looks like an eye. It's uh, a stylized cutout in the handle, uh, in the G10 handle of this new Best Tech. But that is where it gets its name, the Eye of Ra. Uh, this thing is beautiful, I gotta say. Now, Best Tech has been doing a lot of uh, collaborations recently, but for this knife, the Eye of Ra, they're going back to their own stable of extremely capable designers, and um, we're seeing this knife come out. It's a, it's got a classic drop point blade. It's D2. It's a, it's a very, very nice looking blade. I got to say, it's got a straight spine, so maybe it's not a drop point. I don't know what you would call it, but it's a, it's a, it's a lovely blade with a lovely long swedge, and it sits in this handle that is. Uh, it just looks extremely ergonomic. It's got just a slight bit of uh, flair to it, but it's mostly neutral. And uh, the thing I like about this is that the whole cutout in the handle actually looks to serve a purpose. I mean, to me, I mean, to most, it might look like uh, it's just a flow through thing to lighten, lighten it up and to add some style. But to me, that's a pivot point for your finger and your forefinger. Hmm. So you, yeah, you have this thing in standard grip. And you want to uh, change your grip, you slide down to that hole, and you flip it around that way. And then suddenly you have it in reverse grip. I I mill little notches like that in the handles of some of my knives for that very purpose. You also see it in outdoor knives as a socket for like a bow drill. Interesting. I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize yeah. that. I just thought it was, you know, a nice design feature. Just a, yeah, and, and who knows, it might be there just simply as that. But I look at that and I'm, and I think it's in the perfect spot. It's not in the middle. It's it's down towards the the far a little bit more towards the far end and it's circular. It's perfect for a for a pivot point just for manipulating the blade. But all of that aside, it is quite beautiful and it's gonna be a pretty inexpensive knife. It's in there 
uh, D2, G10, you know, line. So, uh, yeah, look for that. Uh, Slicey Dicey has one on the way to him. So uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll have a video of that coming out in short order when it comes out. Especially if he's doing two a day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but again, the, the cool thing about this, all in-house design, but a beautiful design, no doubt. All right. All right. Uh, three more stories to cover, and we're going to take a look at Savivi's new front flipper. Yes, the Exarch. Now, I'm I'm going to mention Savivi later uh, in, in my uh, um, state of the collection because I just got my first Savivi. So um, it's all it's all coming together, making sense to me why people are ooing and eyeing over Savivi, and that is mm. because they're awesome. <laughs> okay, they're inexpensive and they're pretty damn well made. Uh, their new one, the Exarch, is a sort of uh, take on the Chronic, something that just came out this uh, this past year. Uh, the Chronic, or, or at the beginning of 2020, the Chronic is a uh, is a small 3.2 inch uh, flipper traditional flipper with a clip point blade it's really cool looking uh though i've heard uh from from some people it's not the most comfortable thing but that's what i like about it it looks not that it's not comfortable but that it looks extremely neutral it's like a stick basically so the next one in this line is called the exarc and it's got the same handle you look at it it's the same sort of uh faceted in cross section hexagonal handle and uh but this one Instead of a regular flipper is a front flipper, and instead of a clip point, it's got a drop point. And instead of 9CR18MOV, it's got D2. So they've upgraded uh, They've upgraded the steel, presumably. Actually, I, I have no experience with the 9CR. Actually, I hear it's quite great. But uh, the D2, I think, is an upgrade. And uh, uh, the blade shape, you know, that's a matter of taste. Uh, I, I prefer the clip point, personally. But the front flipper looks cool, and that's the USP of this thing. It's got a front flipper. So uh, the Exarch, now this line uh, from Civivi, the Exarch slash Chronic has something for everybody. Front flipper, regular flipper, clip point, drop point, you know, you name it. So having my hands on on my first Civivi, I would say it's probably great. If you like the design, I can't imagine it not being awesome. Right. And by the way, in cross-section, it's not hexagonal, it's octagonal. Sorry. That's all right. I didn't know the difference. <laughs> Hexagon is six. <laughs> you say so. All right. Let's move on quickly. Kun Wu, uh, a new Ronin? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, several months back, I talked about the Kun Wu. Um, uh, what was that? A another knife that came out by Kun Wu. And, and it was their first design. And the name escapes me now. But it's a crowdsourced knife. And I, I don't know if you remember this, Jim, but I said... Do we need another, uh, you know, titanium frame lock ball bearing flipper that isn't even sourced yet, that doesn't even have funding yet? And you very sensibly said, well, look, Bob, these are people trying to make it in the knife world and this is how they're doing it. And I said, you know what? You're right. And if you have a cool design, it had some bike features. I remember some features that uh, that were sort of bicycle related. And uh, you very wisely said, if this is how they can get their knives made, this is how they can get their knives made. And I took a total 180 from that comment and and now I admire them. <laughs> so <laughs> so Kunwu has a new knife, the Ronin, which is beautiful. It's got this uh, trailing point um knife. It's it's our uh, blade. It looks kind of like a Quaken style blade. It's a continuous belly with a very acute point and slightly upswept. And uh yeah, it's it's got the the usual S35VN uh, titanium frame lock package uh with the with the um with the ball, ceramic ball bearings, and it's 3.38 inches, which I'm very happy about because I love the way this thing looks, and if it were any bigger, I'd have to buy it myself. So anyway, Kunwu, the Ronin, that's coming out, and you can get in on it, early bird special, 110 bucks. Check it out on their Kickstarter campaign. So, oh, okay, as I was going to ask, so it, this is another one of their crowdsourcing campaigns. In, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. All right, so and, Kunwu looks like it's a... Uh, uh, a new knife maker that's uh, going to be following the the crowdsourcing route for a while until I guess they kind of get the company built. I reckon. Yeah, and uh, you know the last design was very unique, and this one for uh, the last one was called the Orion, by the way, and that was a very unique design. I didn't care for the design myself, uh, but this new one is really cool. All right, so if the uh, keep this keep this design and make a four four and a half inch blade, call it something different. Then Bob will be on the, uh, <laughs> I'll be on that on the line to buy one yeah. exactly. But there's still time to get on that Kickstarter. May eighth is when it ends. So get oh, on okay, there. good point to know. 
Uh, last story in Knife Life News this week, uh, something uh, regarding Benchmade, and I don't know how to pronounce the knife, Bob. I'll let you. I'll leave that to you. Well, this is this is a new. It's the Leku. I, I mean, that's how I think you pronounce it, Leku, and and it's uh it's a carry on to the the Puko, and the Puko is a uh, was their take on the uh, traditional Scandinavian uh, bushcrafting knife, the Puko. This one is a has a five inch blade, a slightly over five inches, making it much bigger, and uh, carries a bit of the heft at the tip, so you can use it for light chopping and and this kind of work. It's a it's basically a five inch version of the Puko. It's got a um, it does not have a Scandinavian grind, but it does have a high height saber grind, and then it's got a finishing edge. It's three V. And this 3V from Benchmade is hardened to 60 to 62. Now, I know uh, when they featured 3V on the bailout, uh, they received some criticism uh, from the HRC police about the the hardness of the, that 3V. Well, they're claiming the 3V on the on the new Benchmade uh, Laco. And, and I say claiming, I don't mean that to sound like we should doubt that, but they're saying that it's coming out at 60 to 62. People who love 3V and know what that means, I mean, obviously it means it's harder, but uh, let me know. Let me know. Is that <laughs> is that acceptable? I don't know. But, but it's a it's a five-ounce knife. It looks like it's a great outdoors knife, and the handle looks incredibly comfortable. It's got one of those uh, D-ring drop sheaths or drop uh, leg sheaths, and it's got a, a little slot in it to put a fire starter. So hmm. the Liku, it looks cool. The 202 is the number. So news there from Benchmade to wrap up our segment of Knife Life News. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, back on episode number 101 of the Knife Junkie podcast, and it's uh, time for our State of the Collection segment, if you will. Mm -hmm. Bob gets a chance to uh, talk about a couple of uh, new knives in his uh, collection, or uh, uh, knives that are on the way in his collection, or knives that have been in his collection that he's uh, updating or doing something special with. And uh, today in the state of the collection, we're going to talk about, as Bob mentioned earlier, his first Civivi, but we're also going to talk about the Medford Praetorian. So uh, you want to start with Praetorian you know, or Civivi? Yes, I'll start with the Praetorian because there's right. not much to say yet. Uh, but ever since Greg Medford came on the show, I've been interested in Medford knives. And then Alex... Uh, Alex Tissot of Alex's Knife Box uh, dangled this uh, Medford Slim Midi in front of me, and I had to buy it, and it's amazing, and I love it. And then Stu, our good friend Stu from uh, Stone and Steel up in Vermont, contacted me and said, hey, I heard on your podcast how you're interested in a Praetorian. Hey, just in case, we have one. He sent me two drool-worthy pictures, and I sat on those for a few months and then made a few things happen, and now I'm getting one. And I'm I'm very I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, the Praetorian, I have to say, defied my my idea of knife design logic. The first time I saw it, I snickered. And over the years, I've I've grown uh, an appreciation for the design. And now I just got to get the damn thing in hand. I got to say, so uh, I'm very much looking forward to that. I had to uh, sell. A knife and a half, basically, that I really like. So I hope it's I hope it's worth it. Right. And uh, and that's that's all I have to say about that. There will be plenty more, I'm sure. Plenty more opportunities for us to talk about it on the yeah. podcast yeah. and videos to see on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. Absolutely. Uh, any idea when it's going to come in? Maybe in time for next week's supplemental. Well, or? Uh, Stu sent it on, on, so it should be here sometime uh, this coming week. Okay. All right. We'll see if we can, if we have a chance. If not, we'll hear about it on an upcoming uh, supplemental, I'm sure. And again, you can uh, watch videos about it on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. So let's talk about a knife you actually do have in yes. your hand, Bob. And you, you mentioned at the beginning, your uh, first Civivi. You know, this burns me up. You say that I have in my hand. I cannot find the damn thing. Uh, all day, uh, yesterday afternoon and this morning, I'm like, where is it? Where is it? I don't know. It's somewhere in the house. It's not like I've left the house. Maybe your girls took it. But <laughs> yeah, they probably <laughs> did. But the Civivi Shredder. Okay. So you've heard me yammering for weeks and weeks and weeks about how I'm getting rid of my, you know, slowly but surely kind of weaning, wending, wending away at my, uh, at my uh, ball bearing flipper knives. But 
I had to check out a Civivi and, and I accidentally dropped one into the Amazon purchase for some responsible home goods. Accidentally? Yeah, I don't know how Gosh, that happens. I hate it when that happens. That's like when I go to the grocery store and ice cream gets into the to the grocery bag. It's like, I, I don't know, honey. It just showed up. How did, and, and it happens to be mint chocolate chip. I, yeah. It's the damnedest thing. The person in front of me does the same thing I do. What can I say? <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> now they have to lob it from eight feet. But uh, it, yeah, so it came and I see what the big deal is about Civivis. Okay, now let me give you my initial impressions of it. I pulled it out of the box and I was like, okay, it feels like a $60 knife. And I was like, what does that mean? It feels like a $60 knife. Okay, it feels light. All right. So I looked in in inside. The steel liners are beautifully uh, skeletonized. Uh, it's like a triangle, uh, you know, um, it's like a triangle girder pattern in there or something. It looks like something out of construct. It looks like a bridge. When you look at the liners, there's so much material removed that that's what's lightening it up. And then you look at the blade. The blade, uh, the stock is so thin, Jim. Jim. It's so thin. And it's got this beautiful clip point shape with an, with an incredible needle point. And then it's hollow ground. So you have a, an already thin blade stock that's hollow ground. The stuff just kind of parts before you even touch it with the blade. It sees the blade coming and it just yawns open. It's, it's well, okay. It's not that sharp, but it, it is incredible how thin the blade is. So, so my first impression was it kind of feels cheap because it felt light. Hmm. Silly, silly, because when I looked in there, so much work went into making this light. It's not light because it's made of cheap materials or it's oh, chintzy. Okay, gotcha. right. It's light because a lot of effort went into making it light. It is a big knife. Uh, for most people, it's it's got a 3.8 inch blade, so that's a that's almost four inches. It's a decent size, and when you get into uh, a nearly nine inch folding knife, it's going to be heavy unless you put in a lot of effort. So the thing is beautiful. It's got no writing on the blade except a microscopic D2 right at the. I mean, like you really really have to search for it and put on your your old man glasses to find that it's D2. But there's no writing anywhere else. It doesn't say Civivi. All it very tastefully has a C on the pivot on the show side. Uh, the G10 is of the of the cheaper variety G10, you know, no doubt. It's not the it's uh, it's not the kind of G10 you'll find on a high end Spyderco or anything like that. But man, it'll do the trick for sure. And the action is incredible on this thing. And and I I haven't popped it open. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. But when I look. In, I put it on the spine and look in. It looks like this thing is on phosphor bronze washers. Hmm. I, I cannot see the light between ball bearings like I can and all my other ball be bearing flippers. So, so my question, I have not taken it apart yet, and now I cannot find it it's somewhere in my house. <laughs> but people tell me, write in, whatever you got to do. But tell me, is this, are these ball bearings that are in some sort of uh, uh, milled out race in the titanium and you can't see them because they're buried? Or, Am I looking at phosphor bronze washers and just an extremely smooth out of the box washers knife? I can't tell, but this thing is a winner. And now, you know, uh, just for knowledge, so I know what I'm talking about. I need to buy some more Civivis. Oh, absolutely. But absolutely. you know what, Jim? I, I'm not going to hold on to them. I will sell them or give them away or something. I, I because I know in the long run I won't carry them long term, but. I'm fascinated by them. I mean, the, right. they're, they're really, it's a really well-made and inexpensive knife. But it is twice the cost of uh, the Kaiser, um, what was it? The Santa Fe by Tangram, which is an incredibly smooth knife and a, a budget version of a high-end Chinese manufacturer. So, mm -hmm. so when we get down into this budget realm, I'm wondering how you start dividing things up. Interesting thought for maybe future discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to formulate the thought first, but it right. just made me think, like, this is a very nice knife, the Civivi Shredder, but is it twice as nice as the Tangram Santa Fe? Mm, don't think so. All right. Well, if you have a, an opinion about that or any other thoughts about the Civivi Shredder that uh, Bob now can't find, <laughs> or maybe Mrs. Knife Junkie has in her pocket, so that, uh, but uh, maybe you can ask her about that. She did say she liked it. I gave it, you know, I oftentimes, what do you think of this knife? She liked it a lot. Oh, so, well, so. maybe there's your culprit right there. Yeah. Call the listener line, 724-466-4487. Let us know your thoughts of the Civivi Shredder, 724-466-4487. 
All right, Bob, that's going to put the, put the uh, whatever they call it, put the... <laughs> the pommel on the handle? Or something like yeah, that. That's put, nerdy. Put, put the end on this one or put it in the books <laughs> or whatever they say. That's What I'm trying to say is this is about going to wrap up this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Any final thoughts you have as, uh, as we uh, near the end of 101 here on the Knife Junkie Podcast? No, I just don't want anyone to think I'm a total hypocrite because I, I, I've been on here saying, hey, look into deep into your collection and rediscover knives you already have. And here I am spending money on more knives. Please don't think me a hypocrite. I'm doing this for everyone's betterment. And it was an accidental purchase. It was. It, yeah. it, it just did. It, somehow it ended yeah. up in his cart. Yeah. 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 Unexplained. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to help you, Bob. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I'm you just going to keep my mouth shut from now on. You can let Mrs. Knife Chunky listen to the last minute of this <laughs> so she'll, she'll know it was not your fault. <laughs> I'm calling Doug Ritter. That's it. Keep my mouth shut. <laughs> All right, folks, thanks for joining us on episode number 101 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Be sure to listen this Sunday as we have uh, Nick Chuprin on for the interview show. And uh, be sure to join us every Thursday night at 10 p.m. for Thursday Night Knives. That's on uh, Bob's YouTube channel that you can find at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. So for Bob, the Knife Junkie DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife and Newbie person, saying thanks for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.